Seldomly, games have an opportunity to surprise you, lest they follow along the old tried and true scripts of any type of traditional storytelling. Final Fantasy XIV, however, did something quite remarkable to me. It literally ripped the happy-go-lucky vibes that I was experiencing into a deep pit of despair, <coughs> anger, and sadness within the swing of 60 seconds. I will admit to you, this game nearly broke me. And here's what happened. Just as a side note, there are some decently sized spoilers in this video for A Realm Reborn, so you have been warned. We continue our journey back at the Waking Sands to talk to the Super Sleuths team. Fire Hydrant, looking vaguely bothered by it all, Minfilia tells us that it is Limsa Laminsa that is now in grave danger, as the Cobalt tribes have somehow managed to summon their primal Titan. They make a plan to deal with the primal, but the problem being is that no one has any idea of what this guy is capable of. There's no information on him, not like a freak. In times past, the only group of adventurers that managed to actually defeat the bugger was a gang of people called the Company of Heroes. Unfortunately, they disbanded a while ago. Cue camera pan to caffeinated dad, and they legit ask him, are you up to the task? Nothing. Not a single thought in there. Like, legit, they need him to, like, sign a waiver or something because he's, they're just assuming that he's, he's responding to a bunch of different things. He needs, like, written proof, a witness, maybe a priest. You know what? He might even actually be asleep in there. Anyway, they ask Papa Meow to read up on what he can. He gives the biggest boy thumbs up he can. Look at him go. Back in Limsa, we talked to the Storm Captain, and they hit us with the private deadline. <laughs> this turns out to be where Meryl Street arrives and tells us about the Company of Heroes, which I I'm willing to bet they're just a group of pugs that just got really, really lucky. You know, Yashola, though, straight up calls out the Grand Admiral for her shenanigans. Apparently, there was some sort of pact between the Cobalts and the Salty Sea lads, as long as they were left alone, everyone just stay in their own specific corner. And apparently, the Pissy Pirates broke that agreement because they wanted more land and killing the Cobalts when they actually retaliated. There's no way we made this whole thing up to justify a ruthless collective imperialist tendencies. Yeah! Kind of, kind of sounds like the uh, the great uh, manifest destiny uh, for you history buffs. <clears throat> also, this straight up reminded me of this meme. Are we the baddies? The high commander gets a bad case of Russell Jimmy's from this statement, but legit, I mean, you stole a do got a point though. Meryl Webster stops her right there and says, well, damn, she really do got a point, <laughs> but carries on to say, should we just like die then? Cue another question asked directly to my tin can. Yastola says it's our best bet to track down the old company of heroes and see what they know. Apparently, one is working as a miller. Like, you, you slew a god, and then you're like, yeah, I really do like corn, though. After an obnoxiously long chocobo ride, we arrive at this mill to talk to Tractum. Tractum, I think. Uh, his name made me say three-fourths of the word tractor, so his name is now Tractor Tire. He reluctantly obliges us to tell his story of taking down the primal. Then he stands up, and I immediately <laughs> regret talking to this dude. I suppose I didn't recognize the cheetah print here, but what is really killing me is the ultra-large Sonic the Hedgehog tidy whities I swear, dude, you just, just sit back down. You were fine. <laughs> like, half of the dialogue is him flexing in uncomfortable positions very close to me. Dude, can you not make a direct eye contact? This is so awkward. Gavinated, being ever stoic, crosses his giant metal arms to say, hmm. I think you're full of shit with your goofy ass straw hat. This dude goes, what's the look for? I'm a goddamn hero. But like caffeinated's face hasn't changed at all. Like, dude, chill. There, Maybe there was a draft. I was cold. Well, Manthong gets all bunched up and now he says I have to destroy a rat's nest for him to feel more charitable with his information. So after simply devastating Ratatouille in his chef's hut, Tractor Tire says that it's still not good enough and wants me to go hunt a giant goobler that is eating all the flour. But honestly, at this point, I'm just so damn glad he sat back down. Good God. We come back a third time, and he's still pussyfooting around about giving us the details. And honestly, I don't want to be here because he stood up again. So now that's a problem. Also, take a moment to enjoy this face tattoo of a GD Chocobo. <laughs> like, this dude had me absolutely dying. Like, who put this character in? Like, right? Who, who designed this character? <laughs> Well, his boss shows up and Tractor Tire lies saying that he killed a Googler, but it turns out then he was straight up lying anyway because apparently the primal's name is Titan, not Titus, you dinglewad. How dare you! And I'm just gonna just stop right here. This is a good rule of thumb. Never trust someone wearing a banana hammock. This is your caffeinated dad advice for this video. His contract gets terminated, but CD just kind of shrugs his shoulders, whatever. Like, damn, dude, we got shit to do. Come on. 
Well, we step outside to see this massive boulder and a challenge. The person who can break the boulder first is the true gobbly goo slayer. Again, this dude looks like a farmer and a pole dancer had a kid and then sent him to the thrift store. Like, <laughs> well, we can't kill each other directly, but apparently he drugged me or something and I keep getting paralyzed, which someone missing that much of their pants gave me sleepy medicine. I can't even write a joke about this. Like, I'm legit concerned for whoever put this guy in the game. Like, I'm breaking the fourth wall here, guys. Well, anyway, he swings at me and then sets up the slowest bomb in the world, and I win. He falls to his knees, which takes five to seven business days because he's so damn tall, and it turns out that he was lying, go figure, because he couldn't get a job. But he did meet the captain of Company of Heroes, so he's been trying to impersonate him. So that's actually something we can go off of. It also appears that he's wearing oven mitts on his hands. Last thing, that was all. We've returned to our favorite part of Lenoska, and that is Costa del Sol. We walk up to this angry road again to see him as an instant improvement because he's actually wearing pants. Fantastic, I like you already. Yastola and I try our best to convince old one eye here, but he's being extra reserved and doesn't trust that we can beat the Lord of the Crags. Like, dude, I am an entire metal suit dressed like the leader of the Autobots. What isn't there to trust? Yastola starts getting pissed in cat noises because he needs us to prove that we aren't just some ordinary adventurers. Not gonna lie to you, P-Patch. We are extra ordinary. <laughs> I'll see myself out. Well, now we have to go play Aaron Boy, so this guy will give us some information on how to get to Titan's Lair. First thing is to earn his trust. Grab a frog leg. I have to say, starting out with this is just meh. I have to summon a giant frog to kill it? That's what earns your trust? Well, actually, yes, apparently. Wizcatch here met Tractor Tire a while ago at the mill, and he lied about being in the Company of Heroes when he was literally at a job interview with the boss of the Company of Heroes. <laughs> It's like driving to a court case of Grand Theft Auto with the car that you stole. Like, it's such a bad idea. Well, Worcestershire Sauce Man agrees that it is pointless busy work, and now he catapults me into the South Shroud to one of his colleagues to help prepare for a banquet of exotic proportions. We get to the camp to talk to Lannandel. We also roll right by that sniffer lady who somehow knows that we have a chocobo. Also, I do want to make a mention. Someone in the comments suggested that she probably smells you like we smell someone who deals with horses. Like, I think we all know someone that deals with horses, and we know that fact without actually asking them, because we can just go, yep, you've been fine with an equine recently, haven't you? Anyway, we talk to this angry elf man, Land o Lake, and he says that we are going to be looking for the egg of a giant adamantoise turtle. Adamantoise turtle. He goes on to say that basically if you accept this mission, it is under my own free will and that we never talk to this Land Rover or Captain One-Eye about this endeavor. Or else, and I quote, if you ruin my little charade by wagging your tongue, I'll fashion a noose with your entrails and hang you from the nearest heaven's pillar. Caffeinated Dad accepts the challenge and says, Go ahead. Take it from me. We literally walk right outside this camp to grab this egg, and this turtle instant transmissions into existence it, it, to defend her nest, which is lore accurate behavior for most moms in my mind. Well, we get back to Land's End, basically says, okay, holy crap, you actually got it. I didn't expect you to live, but nice. Our next errand is to go all the way down to the desert to meet this Mikote, who is either drunk and slurring his R words, or is legit just purring with each word out. I am uncomfortable with both. Well, we go to lay this trap for an angry dragon statue, and this guy shows up to 1v1 in the desert, but like, I, I don't know why this was a big deal to him. I take like two damage and obliterate this guy, and I steal his necklace. <laughs> I also do get some uh, better gear, and it's better stat-wise, but I immediately take it off because I need to be encased in my metal suit of death. Now the drunken kitty cat sends us out to tame his worm for some sweet rare meat. Wink. Okay, we get it. Moving on. Well, we use some bait to draw out this supposed rarer worm, but it's literally the same bottle, just only slightly bigger. Ooh, so rare. <laughs> Exotic. Well, a quick Mortal Kombat fight, and the Catman is like, damn, you're a fine feline, and sends us back to Whiskatch at Costa del Sol. Also, once I get back here, I just gotta take a quick moment to appreciate this guy's name. <laughs> Seymour Butts. <laughs> Anyway, we have one more item that we have to apparently get. We find out that we need to get some cheese for the banquet, and that was supposed to be delivered by the quartermaster, but something happened, and now the area needs liberating like Helldivers too. And spread managed democracy throughout the galaxy. Well, I get here, and there's a damn goblin, but I, like, try to read this whole paragraph without feeling like your tongue got stung by a bee. Like, this, this, ugh, it was brutal. 
Well, this opens up Ray Flock's Long Stop, a dungeon where we are risking life and limb for cheese. What are we from, Wisconsin? Well, I find a group of players to join in with me being healed by an astrologian. DPS is a machinist and a monk. Pretty good group composition, I think. The astrologian, however, is a sprout too, and everything <laughs> is close. Legit, there were a couple times where I was like, I was stressing. I know in my last video, I sat there and I talked about how much I enjoy doing group content, mainly because they're, it, they're, they're kind of stressful, but like, this was like giving me gray hairs. <laughs> this was definitely not a cakewalk by any means. The first boss is a giant Ziz, and for the most part, it's fairly straightforward, easy tank and spike. The second boss is actually kind of close. I, I fall down to 100 HP, and I'm like popping all of my defenses and potions trying to stay alive. We get the kill, but damn, it was really making me sweat. We get to this last boss, and I swear its name is Hellbender. It's a giant frog newt thing. <laughs> like, why... Why would you give a frog? What what hell is he bending? Like it's a it's a frog. Well, as we are killing this froggy boy, out pops this ridiculously jacked dragon to kill the newt and then to take us on. I legit said, "What the fuck is this?" This caught me so far off guard. Well, anyway, we push to the end of the dungeon to deal with Iator, Iator, Iator. I'm gonna go with Iator, the giant dragon. And seriously, this boss has some really cool mechanics, like a tank buster some fast explosion bombs and ranged attacks. I was I was thoroughly impressed. Well, anyway, down goes the dragon and cue the Napoleon Dynamite fist pump. Outside the dungeon, we talk to the goblin again and literally gives us the smelliest cheese this side of Wisconsin. And we get back to Whippersnapper and there's another character that can smell me before they see me. Then he tells me that I shouldn't try to guess what kind of milk they use for this cheese. Absolutely disgusting. Well, on stream, now we have to go meet Shamani Lomani, the blind Lala Fell, which again, I will stress anytime I I try to type a comment using the word Lala Fell on my phone, it auto corrects to falafel. <laughs> I hope you, I, it's kind of hilarious. I hope you appreciate that. Well, we need to get to the fanciest of wines for this party, but apparently I need to talk to the best vintner in town called Bri Brill Gent. We go and talk to this green chef, Ramsey, and he basically says, piss off about the wine. It's only for good and experienced palates. Like, legit, I don't know how to take this. <laughs> Well, our boy Shamani Lamani says that since the angry wine giant won't help me, we need to see if we can get the legendary Bacchus wines, which are extra rare now because the Calamity like destroyed all the capabilities of creating new bottles, which really means that some people got paid. Well, nobody in town has any idea where to find this wine. Shamani says that there's a drunk out in the woods that may have some or at least know where we can get it. His name is Dressed and he's a hermit and he lives in the shed in the woods. Well, he's also having a panic attack because apparently these dung midge beetle swarms are causing him to go crazy, but he's like a pacifist. Well, I want to say he must know that drinking alcohol gives him plus five strength and rage generation, but lowers dexterity and coordination heavily. So he, he could probably get, he, he could get some. Anyway, we kill some bugs. Then we have to get this man's crazy coconuts, which he has been apparently making his own wine in coconuts. What? Well, we grab his nuts. Oh. And we take it to the blind man and I read the text because y'all told me that I should. Well, it turns out that Lomani is like super psyched because the leaves used to cover the coconuts are from the Bacchus grape vines, which means that I'm about to get paid, boy. Oh, wait, I'm the, the typical hero. Yeah, let's do everything for justice and good sake. Go, Boy Scouts. Has anyone seen my pocket protector? Well, we rush back to the homeless man to browbeat him into telling us where he got the vine. And it turns out that the vines are just growing on the back of some of our wild goobalies. We rip off the back fat and take it to Lamani and, cut, and out comes the angry Gordon Ramsay yelling at us, but we give him the wine cutting to leave us alone. Like, I'm sure we could have worked out like a payment plan or or like gratuity or, or you know, something like that. And anyway, he gives us a very old bottle of wine for me to give back to the one eyed patch man. And now we get to start a banquet. We get this super fast Lala Fell coming bowing down in our honor and we get the perfect pathetic meme from Captain Maynard Dad, and we turn to see all five of the company here standing here presenting me with this banquet. But me gathering all of the items was to see if I was dedicated enough to fight the primal titan. I fought a fire god, you dicks. I'm committed to it. Also, look at this Lala Fell. The stash, little sandals, absolutely killed it for me. <laughs>
Well, they all agree that I am good for my worth as far as a challenger. They pan to caffeinated dad, and it's just straight deadpan. Like, he's listening to mariachi music in there somewhere. <laughs> and now it's time to party. Yashola gives me the, damn, he really fills out that armor, doesn't he? Look. I also take this time to share this joke that my daughter told at school, and I, I think you all would appreciate it. She heard this one at school, and she goes, Why did Dracula get kicked out of art school? Because he only knew how to draw blood. Oh, oh, it gets worse. Oh, dear. It is quite bad. Oh, it's so crispy. Also, this no longer is a PG stream because there are scantily clad cat ladies dancing around. <clears throat> the Lord is watching. We sit down to eat the feast and there's all this great food, but caffeinated dad doesn't take off his helmet. There are no luxuries on the path of righteousness. There's only war. Well, the captain finally spills the beans of how we can get to the Lord of the Crags. Now we have to go whistle in this town at three specific spots to let the contact know that it's us. But like, what happens if someone just happens to be whistling through the town? No, okay, anyway, I'm reading way too far into that. Well, we get ravioli out and he makes mention of beastmen aetherites, so caffeinated dad is not obviously impressed. It turns out the beastmen used aetherites to teleport where they need to go. So we can use the same portal to get them where they are. Then this dude straight up gives sass to Yishtola, asking if she is worth her salt. Well, it turns out she is, and now we are fighting the second primal titan. So first and foremost, chat tells me the best thing about this fight is the music. So definitely crank that shit. Ooh. Wait, hold on. Can I turn that up a little? Oh man, just listen to the jam. Ooh. Also, I wasn't actually sure that this guy was wearing any pants, but it turns out he's got like a loincloth on at least. Uh, well, anyway, the fight mechanically isn't super overwhelming or difficult. He starts dying fairly fast. Nothing bad. I just get, take a couple of few hard hits, but then I was able to mess around and try to get Galactic hit by chasing him. <laughs> well, we also get a limit break for the kill on the Lord of the Crags. Noise! But I do have to say that, like, this probably isn't morally right. You know, that the Kobolds were already being infringed upon by the Lamincins, and we just teleported to their home, killed their god, so, like, again, are we the baddies? Well, we teleport to Limsa Lamincia to inform the Grand Commander that everything is fine. Yay! The, the Maelstrom cheers for us. We get a call from Amphilia. It's time to take our next step. I actually take this time to go to the main city, flesh out some of my dyes to match my gear, because you can't fight crime if you ain't fabulous, sweetie. Well, we get back to the Waking Sands, and I leave you with this moment that almost broke me in this game. Argent also, uh, and Dawn. Yo, Moonguard, Moonguard is, uh, in World of Warcraft was... The hell happened yo they fucking killed everyone no not our vengeance dude he was from alamigo no yo what the fuck What the shit is this? Damn, they got- they fucking killed everyone! Yoshi P, you gotta freaking chill, man! <laughs> Unfortunately, your character doesn't notice any of this. <laughs> it's too thick. Oh, and they killed Naraxia! Maybe she's alive, hold on. What the hell? Advance no further. Okay, so she actually has a gun. Okay. Okay, that makes sense. She actually has a gun. Come for the one who slayed Ifrit and Titan. What do you mean, guys? This is brutal. Bring him forth. 
or you shall know no mercy. Oh no, not Tartaru. <laughs> Damn! Yo, what the hell? Confound it. I surrender myself on the condition you spare the innocents. Conditions? There speaks the supreme sire. I'll grant you have courage, but you would be better served by armor. Oh, I thought that they just iced Menphilia. The one you see. I thought they just straight iced her right there. Like that was the so end. It would see. <clears throat> oh Jesus Christ! <laughs> she straight Spartan no. kicked her. Damn! This moment caught me so far off guard that I was I was just blown away. Like this whole time, team building with my signs, fighting enemies, taking down primals, everything had been fun and lighthearted until this moment. It very much reminded me like this scene from Milan. Well, apparently Minfilia sacrifices herself, but then is shot at again. Nox, our Slith buddy, flies out to protect Memphilia, only to get roundhoused into the wall with such force that it broke the stone wall. I get a very vague glimpse of Papa Meow and Tartaru being escorted out as prisoners, so I'm happy that they're safe. I also realized that as I was going through this cinematic, that if I stop progressing with the dialogue, the sound effects in the background of the soldier stabbing the dead bodies just keeps going. Do you guys hear that in the background? Like, it's, it's, like, they're just, the, the dude has to be dead, but they're just still stabbing him until I press this button. Like, I am controlling the hell that this dude is going, they're still stabbed, but it's still going, like, it doesn't move on until I press a button. If I took a bathroom break, like, oh, they making sure, sure that he's dead. It's this one guard. And as if the cutscene itself was sentient, it jumps to Livia shooting the soldier who was doing the stabbing. It was part of the script. What the hell? This game knows. Also, I think it was hilarious that one of the garlic bread soldiers was actually fucking up was a Lala Fell. And he was just getting absolutely wrecked. He stabbed his poor Lala Fell like... 50 times the dude died after the first one like and he's just working that corpse over and over i then question why uh, uh our sylph friend is dying oh right she got kicked into the wall at mach 2 and she's a vegetable yeah but they can bruise i come out to a whole group of players standing around me at the entrance of the waking stands and i say this they're like you guys knew all of you knew you knew what was gonna happen all right we need to talk about this this leg of the Final Fantasy XIV journey has absolutely been brutal. Not to mention the high of defeating a primal, but then swinging into such despair of our group of scions being utterly deleted from existence by Livia. This has been an absolute train wreck of emotions. We were happy, then sad, then angry, then in despair. Like, good gracious. Uh, the, the swing of emotions was absolutely amazing. That a game can make you feel that way. Despite me being in utter shock, it was also incredible to see the story culminate to this point for this to happen. Well done, Yoshi P. This was, this was great. I think a few key details led me to this summarization, especially the build-up of the story being kind of slow, and then the climactic battle against Titan that ultimately prevailed really set the high for us to feel the low. I know the community has warned me to be prepared to cry, but like, damn Final Fantasy, at least let me hit max level before delivering the first straight gut punch. I will say this absolutely has me excited for everything moving forward. And as many have mentioned, this is only a Realm Reborn content. So it is absolutely bound to get better than this first sharp twist. Jeez, oh man, this was, this was well done, fantastic. If you are just catching this and you wanna see my favorite thing thus far in Final Fantasy XIV and its previous episode, check this video out here. Otherwise, stay caffeinated folks. Thank you.